How do you talk to kids about what is happening in our world, whether it's what happened with George Floyd, whether it's COVID-19? There are just so many different aspects and different things out there that have parents and grandparents and, you know, people just scratching their heads on what's the best way to answer some of these questions and broach these subjects. So we are joined by Dr. Lulu, a pediatrician. She is with the youth, Dr. Lulu's Youth Health Center. It's in Holotus here in San Antonio. Doctor, thank you for joining us. The first question is, how do you talk to kids about current events? Well, it's the same way you talk to them about chicken and rice and lollipops. I mean, you just talk to them, just literally just talk to them. Kids are little SpongeBob's and SpongeBobettes is what I like to call them. So they want to hear what you have to say. If it's a two-year-old child, break it down to two-year-old little size, bite sizes. If it's a 12-year-old, come out and say it. If it's a 22-year-old, come out and say it. I think kids want honesty and vulnerability from their parents. They want you to be as honest as possible. Don't sugarcoat it because what's going to happen is the child is going to go outside and get the adulterated version. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yes. And then you you can't unadulterate it. Does that make sense? So give them everything you want them to know, the way you would explain to them about crossing the street when there's a car coming, look both ways and then cross the street, something like that. Listen, there are people in this world who look like us, if you're white, if, if you're black, you look like us. It depends on what side of the aisle you're talking, you're talking from. If, it's, if you're white, say people like us, use words like we and us as opposed to them and they, like it's over there. When it's really people like grandma and grandpa and uncle Buck and Aunt Susan, come out and just tell them honestly. If it's a two-year-old, you probably don't wanna go into deep details but they know the word mean. Five-year-olds know understand the word mean. So they say, say very mean people, things like that. And then if it's a 12-year-old, come out and call it racism already. Because these kids literally are having these conversations already in their little clicks, in their little phone chats. They are seeing what's happening. So if you give them the wrong information, they're going to be like, mom, seriously? Uh, so-and-so told me so-and-so. And so that's one of the reasons why you need to educate yourself and then find out what your kids already know. And then maybe you can fix what you have to fix and then let them unlearn what they need to unlearn. But essentially educate yourself first and then come to their own level and use the same words you would use to describe chicken or, I don't know, breakfast, something. Make it easy for them to understand. It's probably harder for us to, to begin these conversations than it is for them to hear these things. You talk about different ages. And when we talk about race and racial inequality, those are heavy subjects. What ages do you think it's appropriate to begin having those conversations with kids? I think once they get to kindergarten. So basically, at six months old, a baby can recognize differences in race, believe it or not, in skin color, they can. While they're not gonna say anything, they can tell, okay? A, an 18 month old can also understand that you were kind of weird acting to that person. They don't know how to phrase it, but a four year old who is in kindergarten knows that that kid over there is new or that kid over there, someone is being mean to them. And then they now kind of put it together. Well, it's the same color kid that so-and-so happened to last week. They start putting it together. So I say once they can go to school, especially kindergarten, it's time to start talking about it. But the best way to teach a child is to lead by example. If your child sees you speaking Spanish, like I speak Spanish to my kids. So they grew up knowing that I speak Spanish and French and, and Nigerian language is about five of them. They know that I'm open to that, right? So they know that. So it was easy for my eldest son to take, to take French and for his brother to take Latin and for the baby to take Spanish because they know their mom is a polyglot. So they know that I already accept that. So by living, living exactly how you want the child to be, your child will learn better than anything you can tell them with words. This is a true statement. Now, I know that I know that you have things on your website and you have some publications out there that can answer a lot of these questions for parents. But I know also that you have faced some of these things head on with your children coming back, asking you questions about what amounted to be profiling, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, I, I get very emotional when I talk to my kids. So if I start crying, just know that I have tissue on the side. 
Um, we've, we've lived here for almost 10 years now. I went, I was active duty. I was commander at Lackland Air Force Base. I was medical director. I have lived here. My boys went to school here, elementary school, middle school, high school. We have lived in this neighborhood. But a few weeks ago, they went running in the neighborhood. And don't you know, someone called the popo on my boys. And the police car, a marked police vehicle, followed them slowly all the way home. Why do you think that happened? This was soon after Ahmad Arbery's case came out. My boys grew up here. I mean, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Needless to say, I don't have that talk with my kids anymore. And I tell people that I don't, I don't know how to tell my son to be who he is. Like, whether he's putting his hand on his steering wheel, or he's playing in his backyard, or he's sleeping in his bedroom. If someone wants to kill him, they're going to kill him. So it's very emotional for me to talk about. It's very sad that this is a situation, but it's also very true and very raw. But I don't want us to approach it like, oh, it's a big thing. No, let's approach it like the way you eat a big sandwich, one bite at a time. Let's start with us. Start with you, yourself. And then, of course, your family members. Everyone knows the family member who is uh, out there. We all know them. And start trying to talk to them and start trying to be the change, which is what everybody talks about. Be the change, be the change. Well, how about practicing being the change for a, for a change, you know? So, yeah, my boys were profiled. It was very, very emotional. My eldest, who, so, who just graduated from Stanford, he will not go running in the neighborhood anymore. He's very afraid right now. And a child should not live that way. That is wrong. Another reason why these conversations need to be happening in our homes, and you have helped us with some information and advice on how to get that conversation started. Thanks for your time, Dr. Lulu. We'll continue this conversation tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Thank you, Dr. Lulu. And I'm going to ask her to pronounce her name for me at 10 o'clock, too, because there's no way I can do it. Again, Dr. Lulu with the Youth Health Center, Dr. Lulu's Youth Health Center of San Antonio. We'll be right back.